Today is another beautiful day and it has been dry for a couple days. So now the road, the logging trail is a little bit drier. So now we thought we would go back to spreading the wood chips on the trails. This is how it looks so far where we have spread the wood chips. So here we'll, we'll use a string trimmer to trim up this grass and we'll continue spreading wood chips over here. You don't want to string trim first. How far are you gonna go? From here backwards. Yeah, there's no grass over there. This area we call intersection because trail is coming from here and it goes over there but also that way and there's this big pine in the middle. So yeah, this is a milestone to get with the trails here.
have the finesse to sort that out. I know, I know. That's why I'm here to make it pretty. Not a good one, anyway. Yeah. So this is birch, and these are great for kindling, for fire starting. And we pulled one off and we found lots of ants over here. Fascinating. Since we're out here on the trails with the tractor, we thought we might as well use it to kind of, I guess, cut down almost, or sort of flatten some of the vegetation that's out here, mainly the ferns. Uh, this whole area in front is absolutely overgrown with ferns. So using the tractor, we're able to lower the bucket and put it in float mode where the hydraulics aren't pressing it down. It's just the weight of the bucket itself that's kind of holding it against the ground, which is fairly heavy. Um, and then by reversing the tractor, we can then drag that backwards over the ferns and recreate the path that's here. So I know when we first walked this a few months ago, uh, before we even bought the property, when we were checking it out, this path was really visible. It was yeah. really easy to see exactly where it was because it was covered in snow and you could see the, the sort of tracks and things. Now with the ferns, if you didn't know it was here, you, <laughs> you, wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to see it. Um, so we're just using the tractor just to, to kind of um, knock the ferns down. You could use like a brush hog or a rotary mower or something like that to do this. But honestly, for what we're trying to do right now, this is actually working really well. Yeah, yeah, this will be great. And uh, I'm really glad we bought this piece of land, but just having some logging trails on it, I mean, it's huge having yeah. the trails already. Like building trails from scratch, it's hard work. It's hard work, and it's really nice to have some that already yeah. have a base. And now it was so much easier to just like chop the ferns off and put the, um, the wood, wood chips. chips on and you end up with a really pretty trail. Yeah, and, and without the wood chips, they're still totally walkable and doable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We walked these when the ferns were overgrown and you can do it, um, but we have ticks around here. And so just walking through the undergrowth is just a recipe for getting ticks on you and things. Clearing the ferns down just makes it much easier and nicer to walk on. And then the wood chips, I think just add a whole new dimension and make it just look super cool. Uh, we've got about half a mile of trails, I think it is, um, like somewhere that. around that, that number. That would take a long time to add wood chips to. We've just been, using the trails or somewhere to put the wood chips that we generated the other week. Um, and I think they look great. But I think if we're gonna start doing more trails, we may need to find a better solution than back and forth with the tractor the whole time. It wasn't- One bucket at a time. Yeah, one bucket load at a time wasn't super scalable. I think it was about a six minute round trip with the tractor. And each bucket load was doing maybe what, 12 feet? Something like that. 12 to 15 feet. So yeah, not exactly a fast operation. And obviously the further we get from the big pile of wood chips, yeah. the slower it goes anyway. But for now, I think this is a nice approach to just redefine the trails, make sure that we can see them and we know where they are. Since we have the tractor here, we also cleared uh, this path here from all these uh, fallen birches. Like before that, we couldn't go through here. And this is how far we got with the trail. So the wood chips uh, end here and it's kind of partway loop around this uh, big tree and it kind of comes from there. So uh, yeah. Let's walk the trail of the trip now. Okay, that was 82 paces. So it took us four days to clear up all the down trees in that area. It took us one day to chip all that and then it took us about a day and a half to spread the wood chips on the trails and it made 82 paces of uh, trail which is very exciting i think this kind of method of uh, improving the trails is really going to work for us This area that you can see behind me is the area that was uh, previously full of the dead fallen trees that we cut, we limbed them, we bucked them, and then we chipped them. And we spread all the wood chips all over this area. Also, they're the same wood chips that we've taken out onto the trails as well. So really, this area is looking pretty good right now. 
This is also the area that we were thinking a shipping container could go. It's relatively flat, it's fairly easy to access, um, the water doesn't seem to pool here, it's, it just seemed like a sensible area to kind of put a shipping container. We have decided not to get a shipping container, at least not just yet. We got some quotes for uh, buying a shipping container, a used one, and the prices at the moment are just insane. They are about three times what we'd seen a little while ago. And it's just because of a shortage of shipping containers, particularly for this purpose. The shipping containers we looked at uh, previously, you could get a used one for $1,500 to $2,000. Now we're looking closer to $5,000 just to buy a used 20 foot shipping container. So pretty expensive. New ones are significantly more expensive than that. We don't need a new one, we're not building with it. We just need something waterproof and wind tight and relatively secure. Nothing's perfect, but it would be, would be better than leaving things out in the open or like we're doing right now, taking things back and forth in the truck. So for now, we're not gonna do a ship container. We're just gonna focus our efforts on getting the uh, mechanical building constructed and, and installed and get all the utilities hooked up to it. And that should give us some secure storage then because that building will obviously be lockable and all the tools we're just keeping in the truck for the time being. This winter, depending on what we decide, whether we stick around here for the winter or not, we may decide to rent a shipping container uh, or a storage unit nearby. The reason that we're not looking at renting a shipping container right now is because to get a shipping container to this spot right now, we would have to get our contractor with uh, his big excavator to kind of skid that 5,000 pound 20 foot shipping container all the way up here. We don't really mind doing that too much with a used one that's already got a few bumps and scratches in it and things, but I'm sure the rental company wouldn't be too pleased with us doing that with a nice, fairly new uh, shipping container for rental. So once we've got the driveway in, that'll unlock some more options for us if we want to look at the shipping container again. Uh, but for now, we are not going to be going ahead with that. So that is it for today. Thanks for uh, joining us in this adventure of uh, building a house in rural Vermont. And we'll see you in the next video.